On today's show, the Houston Rockets cruising past LeBron James and the LA Lakers. Jalen Green with arguably the best game of his career. Cam Whitmore on fire off the Houston Rockets bench. Anthony Davis with zero answer for Alperin Shangun. Dylan Brooks going head-to-head with LeBron James. We're going to unpack it all right here at Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. Throw it up to Jalen Green. Shingoon here in the short row. Oh, my. That's the no look. Jabari for three and the win. Yeah. Look at Tari Eason. Here it. comes Tari. No. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. The Houston Rockets select Amen Thompson and Cam Whitmore. One thing I have never done is not made the playoffs, and so we want to take that step here as well. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin and the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts, including YouTube, where I want you to share your favorite moment from this Rockets Lakers game. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your best bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And as always, thank you so much for making Locked on Rockets part of your day every single day, whether you're on your way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you for being an everyday or thank you for making the show part of your day every single day. A quick shout out to a very special everyday Jojo, thank you so much for making the show part of your day every single day. It was great catching up with you this past weekend, my guy. means a lot. Your support, it was a great conversation. And thank you for being an everydayer. Joining us now is your weekly co-host, none other than NBA draft enthusiast and diehard Houston Rockets fan, Madison Moore. You can track down on Twitter at Madman Leaks. Here to break down the Houston Rockets' really impressive 135-119 win against LeBron James and the LA Lakers. Madison, the Rockets dog-walked the Lakers in this game, spearheaded by uh, some amazing performances from Jalen Green, arguably, I think, possibly the best game of his entire career. Alperin Shingun had a hell of a night against Anthony Davis, one of the best defensive bigs in the entire NBA. Cam Whitmore off the Houston Rockets bench was sensational. Jabari Smith Jr. made his return to the lineup. We've got so much to talk about from this one. But I think we got to start with Jalen Green, who I I think arguably had the best game of his career. 34 points, 12 of 23 shooting. He was 4 of 10 from downtown. Got to the free throw line six times. Hit all six of them. 12 rebounds. Had seven assists. One steal. Only one turnover in 41 minutes of run. It's worth noting, before these last three games, never had a double-double in his career. Since that point, he's had three straight double-doubles. Yeah, man. um, Just absolutely impressive showing by Jalen Green today from the tip off. I mean, what's, what's so from, important from, about from, from the tip to the end. Yeah. From the tip to the end. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, get back on Jalen. No, nah, Jalen just absolutely had a, a wonderful all around game. He led this team all throughout the game. He did it in so many different ways, whether it be the little things like rebounding and passing uh, and the big things that scoring. And what's been so great about not only tonight, but these last like four games from Jalen is the process by which he is getting his buckets. It seems like he's really finding where he can, where his niche is in the offense and the process by which he's getting to the rim now in a, in a, in a physical manner uh, with change of pace, with hang dribbles um, really, selling the deception in his drives and actually having counters um, when people cut him off in other, in other areas, it's allowing him to get to the line. It's allowing him to get easy, sustainable shots at the rim that he's making at a high clip. And so tonight was just the amalgamation of when he actually has a a good shooting night from three and everything else is going in his particular development that we've been seeing that he's gotten incrementally better at rebounding and passing. And now we got such a masterclass game from Jalen Green. I mean, we really have to give this kid kudos 
for the season that he's had and the way he's been responding lately. We, I mean, I just hope he continues uh, to build on this process. No, I, first off, absolutely. Look, he had a, he had a couple, you know, solid games, really good games against the the Blazers, then the Charlotte Hornets, really mm-hmm. bad teams, right? So you're like, okay, we, we've seen Jalen ball out against mm-hmm. bad teams before, right? Let's do it against a good team. And then, you know, the whole team kind of struggled against the Brooklyn Nets, is yeah, what it is, but, and but, not a good but team, then so. <laughs> you go up against the Lakers, right? Now, maybe it's it's not maybe it's not fair to say the Lakers are a good team since they're also kind of vying for a <laughs> lower end play in spot, kind of like the Rockets are. But they're a team with playoff aspirations, mm-hmm. right? You've got LeBron James, you've got Anthony Davis. They are good competition and so mm-hmm. to see Jalen Green do so many of the things that you just you know pointed out and illustrated for us the big the biggest one has been this this sudden change where I, I don't know if it's a mentality shift. I don't know if it's just the approach. He talked about his aggressiveness the other day in an interview with Jonathan Fagan where he, he's talked about how some games he's not coming out or in the past he would not come out aggressive enough in the first and second mm-hmm. quarters. And then it was really hard for him to kind of find or tap into that aggressiveness later in the game in the third and fourth quarter, whereas now he's being aggressive from the jump. And we saw that in this game. Mm-hmm. He scored a quick, what, like eight, 11 points in the first quarter, like right mm-hmm. from the jump. He was, he was, first. A, a, mm-hmm. a ta- but it was like, it was like the first like six or eight points, like right out the yeah. gate that he scored <laughs> yes, so easily yes. all attacking the rim before he attempted his first three. And I think for him, maybe like if it's a process shift of, you know, I, I know for a long time, the Rockets really wanted Jalen to get to be a point to a point where he was a guy taking 10 plus threes a game. And mm-hmm unfortunately at least at this point that's just not something that feels like it should be his Mm -hmm. his first stop you know in Mm -hmm. a game right Jalen shouldn't be a guy who's hoisting 10 plus threes a night just because threes are a technically an efficient shot right if he's not a great three-point shooter get to the spots on the floor where they're where you have your strengths right if the mid-range is easier for Jalen get to the mid-range if he can get downhill and actually get to the rim with counters and with you know the the change of tempo and actually some misdirection and stuff on the way to the basket utilizing his speed in different ways then do that and it it feels like that's kind of the change that we've seen over these last three four games or so where it it doesn't feel like flash in the pan success it kind Mm -hmm. of feels like Jalen may have found something that works for him from an aggression standpoint where he's not just attacking at one speed anymore he's not just driving hundred you know zero to a hundred into the defender and hoping that he can, you know, absorb contact and finish at the rim. He's realizing now, okay, maybe he's not strong enough to to finish through a bigger, stronger defender. But what he is good enough at is he's fast enough and quick enough that he can attack one way and and reload and attack another direction or hesitate for a second, get the defender off balance. And then as soon as they pause for a second, waiting to look, you know, to to try and absorb contact or, or block a shot, then he picks back up and goes. And he's got that change of gear to where when he slows down and then accelerates again, nobody can stick with him right yeah, we saw him cook. get around anthony davis we saw him get around jared vanderbilt in this game we saw him get around so many different good defenders mm-hmm. and that is the the promising thing that if he can if this is who he is now if this is what he's finally like realized hey this is how i can attack and get to the rim it, it completely changes the game for him but as impressive as his offense was madison i think i was more impressed honestly by his rebounding and his passing in this game yeah Because we've talked about how Jalen has grown as a player and as he's improved in other areas of his game all throughout the season, while the scoring has regressed, uh, you know, considerably from where it was the past couple seasons. But it really feels like he's made it a point to be more active on the glass. And some of the passes in this game, he only finished with seven assists, but he had a few more passes that didn't actually result in in assists in the box score, but that were just good passes that either, you know, didn't get converted into buckets or turned into Mm -hmm. free throws for his teammates. Yeah, I mean... Even Emma Udoka used him a lot in this game as our backup point guard. As just after he uh, came out, we started the game as a shooting guard in attack mode. But then in the second quarter, when he came back in for Fred Van Vliet, um, and even some when Fred Van Vliet was on the floor, he is initiating offense and he was letting the, his offensive game come to him. But he was initiating in a way to get guys involved. Uh, most importantly, Shin Goon, of course, who also had a stellar game. But also, we've seen Jalen make almost every pass in the book. We've seen him make kickouts, which we all know has been a, such a struggle for Jalen uh, uh, for the past two years. But he made some nice kickouts to Dylan Brooks. We've seen him do uh, dump offs where he's he's got a guy in the air and he's dumped it off to uh, Operation Goon. And of course, he's always been great at the pocket pass. I mean, just a all around impressive game, high IQ game from Jalen Green tonight. And I'd like to say one more thing about his finishing at the rim and his change of direction. He did that on Anthony Davis, 
which is one of the best rim protectors in this league and one of and one of the one of the types of players that Jalen Green has struggled throughout his career to finish finish around the rim. He drew fouls on Anthony Davis and he got to the rim with his misdirection and change of pace. Look, I, for me, you know, I, I've we've we've talked about Jalen Green a lot this season. I could not have been more impressed and and happy with this game because even though I've I've voiced some of my frustrations, some of my reservations and concerns with him here on this podcast, on social media, whatever, I, I am going to be the first to be like championing this guy's success if it happens, right? Because if this is if this is the turning point for Jalen Green. I am going to be so excited because, again, I, I've thought that this kid had a lot of potential for the past two and a half years. This mm -hmm. season, it looked like he might have been regressing. In fact, it did look like he was regressing for a little while there, but maybe it just took him a little bit longer to tap mm -hmm. into it to kind of understand where he can be effective within this new scheme, this new offense, this new hierarchy with with Ime Udoka, with Shingun taking mm -hmm. a higher role in the pecking order with Fred Van Vliet on the court with him. So it, I hope that I'm wrong. That, that's all I'm going to say is because I, yeah. I voiced my my all my stuff about Jalen Green this season. I hope that I'm wrong. I've said it time and time again. My favorite meal to eat is crow. I love eating crow. <laughs> oh I love God. it when I'm wrong, Madison. I don't like being right. If I if I think a player might be headed down a path that is not the best and I have to talk about that, I don't like being right. I don't want to be right about Jalen Green and the fact that I was like, I think he's a six man, whatever. I don't want to be right about that. I want him to be a superstar. And if this yeah. is the beginning of him, of we're, us seeing him tap into some potential like future all-star level play, superstardom, whatever it may be, then I am here for it because this was an incredible game, a good stretch of games from Jalen Green and hopefully Hopefully it's something that he can build on moving forward. He is very clearly your Locked on Rockets player of the game from this one. But we've got so much more to <laughs> unpack from this Rockets-Lakers game. So many uh, extracurricular activities in this one. Some late, uh, you know, Jared Vanderbilt getting ejected. Uh, Dylan Brooks and LeBron James getting into it. Cam Whitmore trying to send LeBron James to an early retirement. <laughs> We're going to talk about all that and so much more coming up here in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Quiz. This episode of Locked on Rockets is brought to you by Quiz. And look, today we're going to have some fun and test your Houston Rockets and knowledge with a little quiz a question. Which player holds the record for most points scored in a single game for the Houston Rockets? Is it Hakeem Olajuwon, Tracy McGrady, James Harden, or Yao Ming? I know the answer, but do you know the answer? Quiz with three eyes. That's Q-U-I-I-I-Z is the next generation trivia experience. Experience is also the world's first platform where you can earn money playing knowledge-based games. And for Locked On Rockets fans, they've created a NBA quiz game where you can test your knowledge and win real cash. I don't know about you, but winning real cash based on your hoops knowledge sounds like the perfect app for me. I've had some fun with it so far, and I can't wait to keep getting into it. Play with friends or other fans and let your knowledge shine all the way to the bank. You can play without downloading anything. Just go to app.quiz.com with three eyes and start playing today. Day. NBA quiz is the ultimate knowledge challenge for fans that live and breathe basketball. Now back to our question from earlier, James Harden holds the record for most points scored in a single game as a member of the Houston Rockets. Go to app.quiz.com to test your knowledge and win real cash today. That's quiz with three eyes, just like a three pointer play. Now showcase your skills and take home cash prizes app.quiz.com where fans become champions. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, the Rockets led by as many as 30 in this game, Madison. And it was it really was all Rockets seemingly the entire way. They jumped out to a 42-31 start in that first quarter, spearheaded by some insane offensive production from... Jalen Green and Cam Whitmore, who combined yeah. for 25 points in that first quarter. That's the guy that I actually want to talk about next year mm -hmm. on the show is Cam Whitmore, who let's uh, being completely honest, he was a little bit less of a factor or almost kind of a non-factor in the second half. But man, did he have an insane first half off the Rockets bench scoring wise. He finished the game 20 points, seven of 12 shooting. He was uh, two of six from behind the three point line, four of six at the free throw line. He had six rebounds, was a plus 11 in his 18 minutes played. He had 20 points in 18 minutes of run. Madison, at the end of the first quarter, he finished the first quarter with 12 points in four minutes. He had three dunks in that four-minute stretch. 
And uh, like the first dunk happens, it's like slam way more. And then the second dunk happens, it's like, oh my God. And then the third final dunk happens, the one to like cap off the quarter, gets the steal, goes out, breakaway, easy dunk and transition. I was like, I, I couldn't be on my feet, right? Like in the media section, like you can't like cheer and clap and whatever, but like it, I had to resist the urge to do it on that final Cam Whitmore dunk. He was electric off the Rockets bench. Yeah, man. Uh, Cam has been super impressive as of late as well. Just that, just as impressive as Jalen has been, Cam has been just as impressive off the bench. And that run he had in the first quarter, I mean, that's the, that's the stuff of stars. You know what I mean? It almost felt like I was watching a 2K run. You know, when, on 2K, when it's, when guys are just ducking over and over again in one of the 2K it's runs. 2K that's what playing, it looked you're like. you're playing, like, my career mode, and you, like, have to start on the bench, and then you get checked in. Like, you, you're waiting for the NPC coach to, like, check you into the game so you can take right. over and dominate with your, like, you know, 68 overall rating. <laughs> like, that was Cam no, Whitmore. No, that's literally what's happening with Cam Whitmore. I mean, Cam Whitmore just – he does the things that stick on an NBA court. He gets out and runs in transition. He plays with power, aggressiveness, and athleticism, and he can shoot the three. So it's just so easy for him to rack up points in, uh, in, in a hurry that he's really coming into his own. You can see the game really slowing down for Cam. He's getting more comfortable. He's taking the ball more off the dribble. He's getting more on-ball reps, as well as he's, he's just overall aggression. Cam has been great for these Rockets off the bench, and he's his, his minutes are going to shoot up. Like We're going to start seeing him at, at 18 to 25 minutes a game because he's just that good and that important off the bench for these for the Rockets. And for, for us to have a rookie who can – positively contribute to the Rockets winning on the court that is that speaks volumes about his development and who he may be in the future I mean when we when you see rookies that come in and are this productive um they they typically turn out to be all-stars you know what I mean they, they they typically do and so it just goes to show that this Rockets future is so very much bright and we didn't even get into Jabari Smith tonight who just you know, wait, wait, if be you did before look we the... move on to Jabari, before we move on, no, okay. we, we, we got, we got, I, I, we got, we got, we still got to talk about Jabari. We still got to talk about Shingo. We got to talk. There's so much more to get into from this one, but I want to stay on cam for just a moment because my bad, my bad. like at one point, right. He, so well, I, on, on your point about cam and transition, right. He, I do think there's a, almost like a kind of like a mentality shift. And I wanted to talk about this when it came to the Jalen green rebounds. Cause I, I almost want to say that it seems kind of intentional that Jalen is, is being more aggressive on the boards because what it's, what it's allowing him to do is get the rebounds and go, and run go. and immediately get on a transition. And I do think one of the drawbacks to this team this season has been, you know, Fred, Shingoon, they clearly like to play at a bit of a slower play, pace, right? They like to get out mm -hmm. and get set up in the half court, run their pick and roll, their two-man game, all that. That's where they're effective. Jalen is clearly really effective when he can get out and transition and run. Mm -hmm. He's a high-flying electric player. He hasn't been able to do that as much this season. So in the stretches where you've got Jalen playing alongside Cam and Amin, guys who can maybe go mm -hmm. more his speed in transition, I do think that helps him a little bit and kind of puts the onus on the other team, yeah. this case, the Lakers having to defend in transition, right? When you've got a man on one side and Cam filling the other side and Jalen running down the middle with a rebound, you know, and taking off in transition, you've got to guard all three of these high flyers, you know, mm -hmm. coming down on a fast break. It makes it a lot harder where it's not just Jalen trying to attack or lead a fast break one on three or one on five, right? He's got options. He's got guys he can feed the ball to on the break who are also threats in transition, just like himself. So I do think it kind of opens things up for other guys. And, and I, I just want to highlight the, uh, the fact that Cam Whitmore is absolutely fearless going right <laughs> at LeBron James, tried to poster him. The, the, we were, we were this, if you're watching on YouTube, we were this close to a Cam Whitmore, LeBron James poster dunk. The ball barely slipped out of his hands, but oh my God, Toyota Center let out like the biggest depressed sigh after it didn't happen. Yeah. And then like, one play later, two plays later, whatever it was, Cam had the ball, you know, finished like directly over LeBron James at the rim, whether it was off, I forget if it was off a cut or a loose or an offensive rebound, but he, ha he had the ball right under the basket, finished directly over LeBron James, quick little layup off the glass. 
catches the ball, takes the ball out of the net and immediately puts it in LeBron's chest. And LeBron's just standing there like, who the hell is this kid? Were, like yeah. this 19-year-old kid was taking it directly to LeBron James. Oh my God, I cannot. Like he is insane. Yeah. It was so yeah, much nah. fun. Yeah, Cam's a dog. Like that's that's a dog. Like you know what I mean. Like Cam ain't scared of oh nobody. You know what I'm saying? Cam is gonna do what Cam do when he on the court, and it just feels like it's getting easier. To he's he's like the all that rookie nerves, all that rookie. You know what I'm saying? The game's moving a little too fast. That stuff like has gone away, and now Cam is about to build on who he is as a player in a very real way, and and we love it. Like, we love to see it. And when it goes to the fast break stuff, man. I'm so glad you pointed that out because I noticed it on the court, but I didn't connect the dots that way. Yes, it gives the Rockets a whole new dynamic. And with the vets having been playing as good as they were early in the season, and we're now seeing the young guys get up and run and pick us up uh, uh, while – you know, we got to hold the vets down for a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like the Rockets can kind of tap into like a little supercharged version of themselves, right? The vets yeah. are kind of that calming, steadying influence at times. And they can, you can slow things down and play through them in the half court. But then if you have a game where you're able to get some stops and the, we know that the Rockets want to let, their defense kind of uh, ignite their offense at times, right? They, they can mm -hmm. they can be a good defensive team, get a good stop, and then to get out and transition because they're not. Unfortunately, the Rockets are not a great offensive team, right? They haven't been mm -hmm. all season long. They've improved. They're kind of hovering around middle of the pack offensively now, but they've been kind of bottom one third for mm -hmm. most of the season as far as their offensive efficiency and all that. So for them to be able to get those easy transition looks is going to be huge for this team moving forward. Before we talk about Jabari, I want to highlight Fred Van Vliet really quickly, and then we'll spend a little bit, we'll spend a better amount of time on Jabari. And I'll, we also got to talk about cool. Dylan Brooks versus LeBron James. Uh, I, I just want to say Fred, this game, very quiet night. As far as scoring goes only three points. He was Oh, four from the floor, three or four at the free throw line. This might be a season low for field goal attempts from Fred Van Vliet. Honestly, uh, in fact, I'm almost, I can, without even looking up like basketball reference or whatever, I feel confident saying it is a season low, mm -hmm. um, but he had 14 dimes and only two turnovers. And I think this was the exact type of game where you look at Fred and you're like, he played perfectly. He did what he mm -hmm. was supposed to do. Now, you would have hoped that he would have knocked down like a couple of those threes instead of going 0 for 4, sure. But at no point did he feel the need to take mm -hmm. over the game or try to, you know, you know, make his own, look for his own shots because he had so many different weapons on the floor who mm -hmm. all had it going. The times when Fred tries to take over a game this season have been because other guys don't have it going or, or he feels like he needs to hit a clutch shot because nobody else had it in that moment. Tonight, Jalen had it going. Shingun had it going. Uh, Anthony Davis had no answer for him. And uh, Cam Whitmore had it in the first half. Even Jabari and Dylan Brooks were, were really so strong offensively in this game. So Fred was doing what he had to do, which was wheel and deal, right? He was setting guys up. He was very clearly looking for guys, whether it was in transition, in the half court. He was putting guys in positions to be successful. The number of times that he found Jalen, not even as a direct result of him getting an assist, but just looking for Jalen, right? Feeding the hot hand, getting Jalen the ball so that Jalen mm -hmm. could run and orchestrate more offense. That's what you want to see your vet or veteran point guard do. So I was really impressed with Fred Van Vliet in this game, even though, you know, people are probably going to clown him and the, the contract and all this for, oh my God, you're paying this dude $40 million and he went 0-4 and he only had three points. Those people aren't watching the games and seeing the mm -hmm. actual impact that he has on a game, especially again, you know, just the, the leadership, the intangibles mm -hmm. that he brings, as well as the defense, um, which I think is another important element for for Fred Van Vliet, but do want to talk about Jabari Smith Jr. coming up. Got to talk about Dylan Brooks versus LeBron James. Got to squeeze in some Alper and Shingun yeah, before we wrap up this episode. That. We're going to get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Look, around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right in our everyday lives. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme New Year's resolutions and make changes that really stick. Look, I've done therapy in the past and I found it an incredibly helpful process for me in my personal life. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge celebrate the progress that you've already made visit betterhelp.com slash locked on mba today to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash locked on mba 
Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all those who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports group. Because if you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about getting together with friends and family, grabbing a great seat on the couch, getting some of your snacks and food, and getting ready to watch some awesome football. And let's be honest, some pretty entertaining commercials. Because look, we'd be lying if we didn't say we look forward to the Super Bowl commercials. And hey, FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two, or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. In fact, you can take a look at some action like Patrick Mahomes and Brock Purdy to combine for 50-plus rushing yards. You can get plus 145 odds on that one. Here's a fun one. A Super Bowl repeat. San Francisco 49ers to score zero points in the fourth quarter, plus 380 on that one. And here's the best part. New customers join today, and you get two $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And final segment here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, Madison, I apologize. I, I, I cut you off before you tried to transition into Jabari. I wasn't ready yet. I got the show lined up over here, but I, I apologize. Look, it's Jabari's return to the lineup. It was very nice to have him back in the Rockets rotation. He was sorely missed in his absence in his first game back. 18 points. 8 of 13 shooting, 2 of 5 from long distance. He had 9 rebounds, 3 steals, 4 assists, 1 block, only 1 turnover. The floor is yours. What did you see from Jabari in this game? Yeah, man. In a game where so many players had it going in a in a complete blowout, Jabari Smith just came in and played his role and did it to a tee. I mean, he knocked down every open shot, almost every open shot he got. He had some creation reps, and he played stellar defense all throughout the game. He rebounded, and it's just it's just such a pleasant sight to see from a guy who struggled last year so mightily It just playing in a role. And now I think he's, like, this season becoming one of the best role players in the NBA, just honestly. Like, just playing his role and getting it right and being efficient and not – and letting the game come to him. He's all these guys, all these young players with, you know, with all these creation reps, Jabari doesn't get as many, but he doesn't need them. He plays, he plays the game the right way. He he puts his head down. He does what he's supposed to do. And then he has these efficient, beautiful nights and he's coming off of injury. You know what I mean? Like, and for him to just come out there, take what the defense gives him and have a, a, a just efficient 18 as like our fifth option tonight is just, Excellent, man. I just I had to give my shout out, bro, because for you to be that talented and that good and just play a role to his T, you really have to give a young player a shout out for that. And I, I should have I should have had this stat teed up earlier when we mentioned the fast break stuff. But I, I just I was digging it up just now. Uh, the Rockets did in this game. They had twenty nine fast break points, which is almost unheard of for this Rockets team. They have not been get out, getting out in transition that much this season. This felt like a high octane kind of run mm -hmm. and gun game, uh, which at times this year has favored the Lakers. And so I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it worked as well for the Rockets as it did in this game, but credit to them. They they made it work again. Some of those uh, supercharged, young, high-flying electric lineups really helped them over the course of this game. Now, it, it is worth mentioning that the Rockets did lead by as many as 30. The Lakers cut it to, I think, 10 in the fourth quarter, and it it, it kind of felt like a pseudo-fake comeback, but you the thing is, Madison, right, you never a really know... Comeback. A ref comeback, that's what you're calling it? <laughs> that's what I'm calling okay. it. <laughs> Look, Le LeBron and Dylan Brooks kind of got into it post, or, you know, you know, in, in that fourth quarter. Uh, there was the, uh, the we'll call it air quotes, flagrant foul on, on, on Dylan Brooks, which, look, at the end of the day, I, I said it earlier in the game when they went and reviewed that other play, uh, the push in the back that Dylan Brooks had uh, to see if it, if it met the criteria for a hostile act. I think Dylan Brooks has to lead the NBA in plays that are reviewed for potential flagrant violations uh, past any other player, because I, I swear mm. his reputation colors the way that officials referee him 
maybe more than any other player in the association. Like he, his reputation is just that of like, he's the villain, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And so they ref him a certain way, right? You can like other players can get away with like tons of the stuff that Dylan Brooks does. And they'd be like, oh, common foul play on. Meanwhile, Dylan does it. And it's like, I'm surprised they don't have like a police escort ready to get him out of the building the moment it happens. It's a little ridiculous, um, but he had a very stellar game and he was, it was funny because right after the, uh, after the the flagrant call uh, that he had against against LeBron, uh, he was like hounding him after the play, right? Like follow him around and whatnot. Try just those little mind games that Dylan yeah. Brooks has. I love it, man. I love watching him play. Yeah, now the mind games was was uh, in full ag- effect against uh, uh, Vanderbilt. <laughs> I oh, mean, for sure, you to get sure. ejected, for you to get ejected, uh, t- you know, at the ten minute mark in the second quarter, just because a guy is in- under your skin, bro, like. That's just excellent, excellent, Dylan Brooks. I asked during the game. I tweeted, "Now, Dylan, why would you foul him on that play? It was it was an easy duck, but see, he was playing chess, there not go, checkers, chess, not checkers, for real Dylan estate. <laughs> he getting that real estate. In your head oh my god, it's just yeah. just living rent free in in Vanderbilt's right. head. Um, and then speaking of the getting a reaction out of guys, um, Jackson Hayes, who does he think he is, man? Like Lakers are trying to mount this, you know, whatever the ref comeback, you know, fake comeback, whatever you want to." call it in the fourth quarter it actually looks like they have momentum right like i actually was thinking for a minute there i was like are the rockets really gonna like let this one go like because if anybody can take over a game late it's lebron right when he pulled up and hit that like 26 footer i was like Mm. oh man oh this this (laughs) this might be a a epic rockets collapse and a lebron james led comeback and like if anybody could do it it's him but then jackson hayes like started getting upset with the officials over like like i don't know who he thinks he is but he's these not like the fact that he was out there playing instead of anthony davis was already like a win for him which i guess it's still unclear did did we i didn't get an update i didn't see anything that said was 80 hurt or was was jack was darvin ham just like not 80 you stink and and we're gonna go with jackson Hayes. i just think they kind of were mounting that run with ad on the bench and Jackson was a big part of it, so I just think they kind of ro- rolled okay, it with was, it. It was Darvin in Ham's, a similar uh, way. It was, it was the his Brooklyn Kevin McHale comeback. moment. That's what it was. He was yeah, 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 right. Eighty <laughs> was James Harden getting benched. That's what it was. <laughs> right, um, basically. <laughs> all right. Well, and look, one of the reasons that we probably didn't see AD return, right, is the fact that AD had zero answer for Alper and Shingun in this game. Al P feasted on Anthony Davis in this game, 31 points, 14 of 24 shooting. He had 12 boards, had seven assists, two steals, and a block, plus 15 in his 40 minutes of run. The number of times that that Al P, and, and the thing is too is, very clearly right like Jalen had it going early Mm -hmm. uh cam had it going and kind of carried that that scoring burst from the end of the first quarter into the second quarter and they were very focused on like keeping those two guys going there Mm -hmm. in the first half so alp's offense kind of came a little bit later on but there were so many moments where like they'd be looking to like run a play and kind of run the actions from the perimeter first like you know getting you know Mm -hmm. little dribble handoff sets and stuff to 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 Jalen to cam to to fred whoever um and then, like, Alp would just decide, okay, cool, clear out, I'm going to go. <laughs> and he would, like, the one-on-one buckets that Alp scored on Anthony Davis, just watching Alp move Anthony Davis out of the way like he wasn't even there was so funny to see. This is a top three defensive big mm-hmm. in the NBA, and he couldn't guard Alp one-on-one. Couldn't do it. Yeah, uh, it goes to show nobody can guard Alp. And it, it just also goes to show the ampedestrianness of his game. He doesn't need he doesn't have to isolate isolate to be super effective. Like he can let other guys initiate the offense and he just get the ball and, and go when he, when he needs to. And he scored this such an efficient, brilliant game. And when he has to play, when, when the Rockets are ready to play, uh, play for a championship, he's going to have to play with elite, uh, another all-star companion, whether that be Jalen Green, Cam Whitmore or somebody else. And there's going to be a lot of times where he's off ball, and this is how he's going to he's going to play with those all-star companions. And I and I just thought he had an excellent game. And even though Cam Whitmore did not get the poster on LeBron, you know who got the poster on LeBron? <laughs> Alper and Shingun. <laughs> so just just Alper and Shingun just had an excellent game. I mean, he still got the passing. He still got all the other things in his, in his uh, tool bag. And it was good. It was nice to see him not be burdened with the entire weight of the Rockets offense uh, tonight. It's it's good to see him have a couple of nights off where other guys are involved and can get him some easy shots. Well, we, and we kind of, this is, this has been kind of like the, the recipe for when the Rockets do have a successful game. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I will say there, 
uh, you know, defensively, maybe this, because this game kind of turned into a bit of a track meet, you know, you'd like to see the Rockets maybe, I don't know if slow it down is the word, but you know, this wasn't exactly the defensive identity rockets that you're accustomed mm -hmm. to seeing, although they did get their fair share of stops and those stops kind of ignited their offense, allowed mm -hmm. the, them to get in transition. I do think at one point though, in this game, it kind of became more about just let's, we're just going to outscore the Lakers because mm -hmm. we can't, they can't stop us. So we'll just keep piling it on. Um, and the, the, the focus became more about the offense and the defense at that point. But I, I loved seeing right the two man game, especially between Jalen and Al P. Mm -hmm. You talked about it earlier about how Fred kind of took a back seat and allowed Jalen to run a lot more of the offense in this game. So we got to see a lot more of that two man game between those two guys, right? Jalen hitting Al P with that little pocket pass on the roll, or you know some of the different like you know screens that we saw Al P set that allowed Jalen to get all the way downhill to the basket or open him up to be able to get to his little mid range shot. So seeing the way that those two guys were able to be effective to, together I know that everybody wants to do like the the Denver Nuggets whatever comparison <laughs> um and I think you've actually brought this up before uh or maybe it was he was Alec somebody brought this up that wasn't named me on the show <laughs> um so I'm trying to give credit where credit is due but I, I've also had this thought before is just I think if you look at the similarities between them I think a De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis comp is a lot more accurate for Jalen mm -hmm. Green and Alper and Shingun, especially when you consider that De'Aaron Fox hasn't been and still kind of isn't a great three-point shooter throughout mm -hmm. his career. He's more of a guy that is, you know, quick, explosive, nimble, mm -hmm. a little bit of a smaller guard, but can still be really effective in the mid-range and getting to the rim. And he does it in a variety of different ways. He changes tempo. He, he's crafty around the rim. He's got the mm -hmm. mid-range bag. Like all those little things that we kind of saw on display from Jalen Green in this game, I think that is more so the blueprint of how a team that's built around Alperin, Shingun, and Jalen Green can be successful with those two guys without either of them really being absolute three-point threats, right? Sabonis isn't a three-point threat. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. De'Aaron Fox is not a, th a crazy three-point threat. He'll hit him sometimes, but he's not a lethal three-point shooter. And yet they, they put tons of shooting around those guys and they've got one of the most high octane offenses in NBA history because of it. So seeing the way that those two guys kind of complemented each other in this game was really exciting. If that's something that they can build upon moving forward, it was kind of a glimpse into the past of what we've seen the two man game look like between those two uh, previously. Yeah, man. Uh, definitely think that Alperin Shingun and Jalen Green are, are incredible fits for one another. I mean, Jalen Green's ability to initiate the offense and hit the pocket and find Alperin Shingun all over the floor, I thought it was great, not just all, all game, but also in fourth quarter and during crunch time. Now, all year, Jalen has struggled to initiate offense in the fourth quarter. All year, he, he struggled to take care of the ball uh, in the fourth quarter during crunch time as guys uh, kind of just poke at his handle. Um, but tonight, I thought he was really good, and he had some of, two of the biggest buckets. Not only was he finding Shingun in the pick and roll, but he also had two of the biggest buckets. One, he actually got to the rim on Austin Reeves and scored, um, which which pushed the lead back up. But the play before that, he actually got to the line, uh, falling back on – his incredible driving ability and which trends in the crunch time, right? Which trends to the sustainability of this new way he's playing. We talked about how Jalen, uh, you know, about 10 games ago had a great shooting stretch, but we didn't know if that was quite sustainable for him. The way he's playing now is the first time I really felt like this is a sustainable way. And he did it in crunch time, which was so encouraging to see. Uh, so I just want to give him a shout out uh, on that and find it out for Shingun as well. Last mention here from this game that we got to talk about. Uh, good friend of the program and former Houston Rockets legend, Christian Wood, who was getting absolutely cooked by Jeff Green in isolation in this game. Uh, I don't know. Somebody needs to tell Darvin Ham that Christian Wood cannot guard Jeff Green. Uh, I don't know who Christian Wood can guard, but it's not Jeff Green because Jeff Green saw Christian Wood and said, that's barbecue chicken and went at him every single time down the floor. Uh, my goodness, that was tough. Like I was, I had some of like some rockets, like employees, you know, they're the social media team, whatever sitting next to me. And, uh, one guy after it was like the, after the second or third time that Jeff green went right at Christian Wood, uh, dude, dude just mutters. He goes, he's food. He's food. Keep going. After him. I was like, Oh man, that's, that's, that's rough. So, uh, look, it was, it was an exciting, fun game. Uh, it, it felt like a, a much needed game, right? The Rockets mm -hmm. had, you know, a, a kind of a stretch of some rough games as of late. Um, but this is one of those games where, you know, they got up to play LeBron and AD and the Lakers. 
Um, it, this is one where you can walk away feeling really good about the process, about a lot of the different individual storylines. Feels like everybody kind of played their role almost to perfection in this game. Uh, so the Rockets should be really excited about this one, and, and hopefully it's a sign of things to improve upon moving forward. Hopefully this is kind of the game that maybe gets their mojo back a, a, a little bit uh, moving forward because they got the Pelicans, which will be another big one uh, coming up on Wednesday night. But, Madison, any final thoughts before we shut this one down? No, I think I'm good, man. It was a it was a fun game. It was a fun recap. Uh, a lot of a lot of fun moments from this one. I want you, if you're watching the show, if you're listening to it, I want you to go on YouTube in the comment section. Tell us your favorite moment from this game in the YouTube comments. But Madison, you know the drill. Let everybody know where to track you down at. Yeah, follow me on at Madman Leaks. I love to talk Rockets basketball. That's going to do it for another edition of Locked on Rockets. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube to search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.